Hello, it's Yancy Crucial here, and this is my friend. I'm delicious and nutritious. It's Gabriel, who, believe it or not, did some bloody work this week and actually made a pre-recorded video that we're watching for your joy today. So very hard. So yeah. what are we watching? Well, we're watching a trilogy of error, which is three incredibly shitty motion-captured, uh, not motion-captured, uh, screen capture video games. I'm um, getting that already. Yeah. So the first one is called Survival Arts. Now this is a real, like, fucking... So people don't know about this game generally, unless you're like me. Um, so this is a game where you go around hunting rabbits, building little bivouacs out of branches uh, and Oh yeah, leaves. it's actually, this is a procedural survival sim. I'm seeing that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot to it. Look, that man is, uh, uh, you know, quenching his thirst with the other man's blood. Delicious blood. Um, so yeah, this is a real fucking backwards digitized fighting game. <laughs> Look at that pot. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you, you, you'll, you'll hear it when you're listening, when you're actually watching the video, um, listeners and viewers. But we the sound don't. in this is quite fun. And yeah, Viper, when he wins, goes like, woo! It's really funny. We it's could totally only character. find very baggy clothes to disguise our obvious lack of physique. Yeah, um, this does a lot of things that I love about, uh, digitized fighting games. Um, that's, that like... Battleground is way too busy. Yeah, there's all they, the burning flames. They go to. This isn't. The fighting mechanics are definitely not polished, and there's a lot of problems with the game in from an actual sort of fighting game player perspective. I uh, this I'm going to take a wild stab in the dark here. Did this come out not too long after Mortal Kombat? <sighs> did you guess? Figured as much. Oh, it's insane. So yeah, this game doesn't have actual fatalities, and it's one of its little things is there's destructible environment areas that um, can yield weapons that you can pick up in the middle of a fight. Some of these weapons are guns that don't fire across the whole screen for some reason. Right. Some of these weapons are like bats, axes, swords, you know, various shit like that. You seem to be fighting pro wrestling Hodor at present. Uh, yeah, pretty much. There's two sort of pro wrestlery type characters in the game, and the game's engine is in no way designed for, like, complex sprite interaction so they don't really have grapple moves like all they can really do is throw the sprites at each other in what appear to be attacks okay like that like that's a move that's a special move it's just to huff his foot out at like just thigh height yeah not dick height He's... not chest height not knee height just you know. that's a, that's as high as he could lift his leg i think yeah. oh, oh well prove me wrong no the just um, as i say it the Award for, like, most... Okay, so a lot of these games have a problem in that the people that they digitize can't actually do the fucking moves required of them. So that's what Mortal Kombat did well. Yeah, the winner for that award, which I didn't bother doing for this because I think it's already been done to death, was uh, Tattoo Assassins, where oh. a lot of the guys oh, can't... Yes. didn't have the flexibility to do high kicks. So yeah. you just see them, like, their high kick is just like... And you can practically hear the fatty grunt as they yeah. sort of try to huff the leg up. Mortal Kombat guys were a live bunch. Yeah, like... Well, there was only, like, four of them, wasn't there? They were all wearing, like, different... Daniel Piscina, like, Carlos Piscina... Same um, guy fighting a ninja, wearing a different ninja outfit this yeah. time. Yes. <laughs> you know, palette swapping your sprites is a good way to spread spread things out. Well, yes, I agree, but I think Mortal Kombat were overdoing it a bit. Oh, by yeah, the by the end it was fucking ridiculous. By the time they had the Rainbow Ninja Clan mm. fully going. The Ninja Tubbies. Um, so, yeah, this is... A forgotten game, essentially. Like, no one- this never comes up in discussions about fighting games in the 90s. It's, it's, you sliced that man. Yep, with my shitty projectile so sonic boomy attack. So did you do a fatality move, or did it, does that just happen on the last blow? There are no fatalities. If you hit him with a significant, like a special move, or a weapon attack on the last blow, they'll explode. Hey, it's Vegas let himself go. <laughs> Fat Vega! Yeah. Or should I say Bullrog in Japanese versions? Yeah, I was thinking of doing one of the. Oh, actually, no, no, that comes they, a bit later. Are they in a space elevator? Um, no, an underwater elevator. Oh, see? yes, yes, I you see. You can the, tell by the space I fish. I see the fish now. All right, perhaps you better give this some context. What is the plot of. I've, I've forgotten the name now. Survival, survival Arts. Arts. What is the plot of Survival Arts? Okay, my response to that question is this. <laughs> yeah. It actually doesn't explain it until you beat the boss. And even then, and wait, wait till you see it, even Whoa. then it is just... So much for investment. Yeah, it is just terrible. But then they never explained who Cabal was until his ending in Mortal Kombat 3. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, that's... He was one of my favorite characters. Yeah, Yahtzee liked Cabal because he had a mask and he had a scary face under that mask. As my brother said, I liked him best because he was a cripple. 
Uh, I'm Cri- sad now. Cripple was one of his favorite insults for me. Why, why did he call you Cripple? I don't know. He just sort of latched onto the word. Were you in he any was- way physically? No, he was, just wasn't an intellectual powerhouse. Anyway, continue. <laughs> All right. Well, he's got two kids childhood. now. He's bred. That's fucking frightening. <laughs> Sorry, Yahtzee yeah, discusses his family hour. We'll be back after these video game related messages. Plot of game. Uh, the plot of game is fight about it. I've always wanted to make just a, you know, a fighting game with it, that is called Oh Yeah, and just that's literally the plot. <laughs> it's just, all that is, people bump into each other, it's like, Oh Yeah, fight about it. Which is actually technically the plot of uh, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Jesus Christ, what's, what's this pansy parade we've got in the background? <laughs> that's that's a motorcycle gang of the afterworld. Like, hey, hey, we're trying to do some modeling here. Get out mm. the fucking way. Stop punching our fridge. You asshole. Our beer was in there. They all look like unused Zorg character designs for Fifth Element. Yeah, I think they're all embarrassed at that guy on the right. <laughs> <laughs> He's someone's retarded little and brother. Yeah, there's, there's they just the, let him show up. There's the character who's from this motorcycle gang of doom. I see that that man forth from the left is uh, debating whether to have sex with that very easy woman lying on the floor to his left. <laughs> yeah, she seems easy. Like, look, I'm implementing my legs. Look, I'm doing it again. Go on, go on. <laughs> have, a, have a snack. That guy's not waiting. He's anticipating. Lady on the bike going, look, did anyone want to ride or what? Or are you just going to stand there? And once you, like, the weapons stand are pretty good. Stand there with your top half of your sprite momentarily detaching from the bottom half of your sprite. Yeah, the game does scaling, and it does that by having things split into four separate blocks, which can kind of glitch a little. Oh, that's dodgy programming there. Well, you know, you work with what you had back then. I've, I've played a lot of games that managed to somehow have large sprites that didn't do that shit. Were they made back then? Well... Well, I mean, there were a lot of games with where like, characters were made up of multiple sprites. They didn't all have that bloody stupid issue oh, yeah, every time the camera moved they'd around. They'd have probably been, had more work spent on them and been done by better fucking publication houses. It's not that hard. Well, I haven't done it, so I'm in no position to judge. Just she, to... she can block a sword, by the way. But see, that... the weapons like do chip damage, so you can just basically get pick up a sword and then... I think what they were doing was just having the two halves of the character moving relative to something other than Smash. each other. You just, have to, you just have to make the top half move relative to the bottom half. Ooh. Yeah, there you go, 90s game dev guys. And here's um, Kitana's Let Herself Go. <laughs> I know, like, the one of the problems with the game is the stages are so unnecessarily busy. Actually, the main character is Striker's Let Himself Go. <laughs> Green Striker, go! Yes, I'm extremely well camouflaged for standing in front of a CG yeah. environment. <laughs> He doubles as a weatherman's backdrop. Yeah. Uh, spamming attacks. Makes you wonder what colour the actual green screen they were using was. Maybe he was supposed to be the Invisible Man character and it didn't work out. <laughs> just make him all just guts. There was a character in one of the Mortal Kombat games called Meat, who was just one of the character models with all the skin stripped off. Well... Uh, Mortal Kombat. Yes, punching away. Um, so yeah, the plot of the game is just, it's, it's, it's a fighting game, like, they didn't even... Is there a big villain? Um, yes, and he, you'll, you'll get a chuckle out of the big villain. Is he the big boss you fight at the end? Yes. He's What's the, his he's motivation? The big um, oh, you'll find that out. That's, all, all shall be revealed okay. in an amazing... I will be patient and enjoy yeah. this woman in her yoga outfit. <laughs> yeah. Beating up the man in his painter and decorator's uniform. Yeah, it's basically a Pilates instructor fighting with her contractor over renovations. Yes, thank you for rewording what I just said. Anyway, any interesting news in gaming this week? Um, well, someone said a thing. Yes, Phil Fish, in, in specifically, opened his big fat trap again to continue enforcing why we don't like him much. <laughs> It's, it's good that I you mean, say that. I'd almost forgotten why we didn't like him. Oh, that's right, he cancelled Fez 2 because he was a big whining baby about it. <laughs> I'd love to see you two in a fist fight now, that would just make my day. Why did he cancel it again? Um, someone said something about it. Oh, uh, yeah, thin skinned fella, isn't he? You know why they call him Phil Fish? I don't know. Because every now and again he just sort of bobs up out of the water and then bobs down again. <laughs> and I- whenever this fish bobs up, his main purpose is to fill space on new on gaming media websites. Well, there's... I kind... I mean, in this circumstance, I do think it was weird. I mean, there is... 
You have to understand what behaviors your communications are going to elicit. Like, how do you think people are going to respond if you just pop up? Oh, well, hey, it's your YouTubers. business partner. It's your business partner in the painter and decorating business. He's the plumber. Yes, they have a shared aversion to sleeves. His name's Gunner, and he has a gun. I see. Well, that's uh, better than Striker's character. His gun's pretty combat. OP, too. Like, this game has really irregular damage. Like, one attack one minute will do X amount of damage, the same attack the next minute will just do a little bit more for no discernible reason. Like, I can't uh, tell, is it a counter hit thing? Or... Randomization, is it? Yeah, the next game has that a little bit as well. Like, and terrible hit collision. Like, hey, you just... lost. Yeah. You must be shit. Mm -hmm. So what were you saying about Phil Fish? Well, I mean, again, there's... I, I watched a really interesting thing, which I do recommend people watch, called, um... This is, uh, the, the, called This is Phil Fish, uh, I think by Innuendo Studios, which is, it's like, it's like 20 minutes, and it's, it's not really about Phil Fish, it's about Wait the nature of internet fame. Wait a second, an organization called Innuendo Studios um, created a video called This is Phil Fish. Yeah. I bet they fill fish all the time. Na 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 Nah. That was innuendo. <laughs> I'm glad you covered that. <laughs> Sorry, I just I just can't get over that it, what a useful name it is to comedy. Yeah. Mm. Um. I mean, look at that. That was a knee kick that worked as an anti-air. Anyone who plays fighting games will know that that's bullshit. Do you think anyone ever calls him Filio Fish? Filio Fish. Probably. That's probably Ew. what he was called in primary school. Like that's... Ew, filet, is it? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> la -dee da Ew. No, we, we, don't eat, we don't have our fillets, do we? No, we've got to have our fillets while we eat our I, well, sandwiches. Well, I thought that's what McDonald's called the fucking thing. Oh, yes, while we eat our McDonald's sandwiches <laughs> on our city. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying. My Ottoman. Um... Do you even know what an ottoman is? Yeah, it's like a little, it's like a little circular footstool. Well, thing. you can't be in it then, can you? I meant on. I thought you said in. Yeah, you do realize people can just like say one thing when they mean another, right? Yes, and I'm going to call you out on it every single time because <laughs> I'm like yeah. that. Way to, way to call me out, Yahtzee. Continue. Um, wherever we were. Wherever we were. Yeah. So Phil Fish. Okay. So basically, well, well, how this documentary ha is interesting because it it, it 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 analyzes exactly this problem, which is. You know, do you, you have you ever met Phil Fish? Do you hate him, or do you hate the construct that the media has of Phil Fish? Well, I, have, well, I hate the construct that posted all those tweets recently, saying that let's play videos owe money to the again, the yeah, and that, this is what I mean because there is an interplay. Like he has engaged this system of internet fame and all its intended. You know, all its. I'm still waiting for a non-baggy trouser wearer. You'll be waiting a long time. Sorry. This is like in the post-apocalypse when all we had to wear was MC Hammer's leftover parachute pants. Yeah. Um, they're actually quite comfy. Um, so yeah, so basically it, it, it analyzes like, it's sort of exactly this problem. It's like, uh, and again, it's, it's, it's one of those things that doesn't have just a simple answer either way. Like, yes, I think Phil Fish is getting sort of a bit of like, you know, bloggers, news sites will fucking absolutely jump on the negative Phil Fish bandwagon because it's an easy way to get clicks and everyone likes to hate Phil Fish. He is making himself an easy time. I know, so. but then there's that aspect of it, which is why pop up after all this just to say something that you know is going to be weirdly unpopular and then to ah. phrase it in a way that you know is going to annoy people. Are you saying it's a calculated move, producer's style? Well, I don't know if it, I, I, you know, I can't say if it's a calculated move because I don't know what his end game is. Like, if it's a calculated move, what's the res expected well, result? Well, he, he doesn't so. have much to uh, create publicity for at the moment, does he? No, I mean, that's, again, and... He cancelled already... his game, that's why we hate him. Yeah, that's... Again, so I'm not sure why he'd be doing this to just get favor. So again, like, the, you know, therein lies my confusion as to what the goal of his communication is. Maybe he's just mad. <laughs> and it, It's possible. I mean, again, to, to have that attitude, which I think is quite divergent with reality. Yeah, I think that uh, intestine's trying to hump your leg. Yeah, it's just friendly. You just let him finish. It's just, just let him finish. Um... Oh, look, there's Tobias. <laughs> <laughs> Tobias Funke in the background, having it's, become a Krishna. It's the jumping Jews of Jerusalem. 
They're, they're Buddhist. They're wearing socks too. The, 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 and look, the, there's a puppy. The, there's a Yahtzee puppy. The, did they just randomize background elements in this game? This is yeah, like the backgrounds are uh, meant to be. It's meant to be some sort of post-apocalyptic thing, and so there's like a weird cultural mishmash. A guy's sitting at the bar going, Jerry. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure I agree with your ideas about live entertainment. This neighborhood has gone to shit. I mean, there's two guys having a fist fight back there. Yeah. There's, yes. a, there's a dog shitting on the floor and the jumping Jews of Jerusalem right next to them. Yeah. You've got, like, attractive girls, you just, Krishnas. Oh, not Krishnas. You just don't get performance art, Trevor. Yeah. <laughs> you just don't understand. And that one Krishna hasn't shaved his head and is wearing a big green cravat. Yeah, it's he's, a, he's like, this there's a lot that you could talk about this background. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little distracting. It's amazing. Look at forever. I do want to stroke that dog, though. He looks like a little sweetheart. Aww. Yahtzee and puppies. Seriously, if you want a positive reaction from Yahtzee at any time you see him, bring him a puppy. Was your rambling... Look, there it is. That's the boss. <laughs> and tell me that's not oh, a, a Will Ferrell character that they didn't put on Saturday Night Live. Well, my first thought was, you spin me right <laughs> round, baby. And look at him. Right he turns into round. a ball. Yeah, yeah, so that's Dantel. He's the, he's the evil villain. Okay, I'm just riding the wave at this point. I know, it's amazing. Look at him. Dantel, of course, makes perfect sense. Yeah. Continue. Yeah, that's Dantel. He can shoot bullets out of his fingers. And he kicked your ass. His hair is spectacular and takes hours. I think he's just wearing a toilet a carpet. <laughs> yeah, it does look like toilet carpet. Um, you can spit fire. So he's, he's all things to all people. I think that's important. Well, um, okay, yeah, now, it might look like I'm screwed, and then I realize the shitty fighting game rule 101. Keeps, Spam keeps projectiles. Because yeah. yes. the, the AI has no way of dealing with it. Boom. Oh, Will Ferrell, oh. sleepy. You have bested me. <laughs> now you may take the toilet mat and, it, and be good to it for all eternity. Now you be, may be in the next movie about a man who is comically not suited for his job. Did you have a rambly point to make about Vulfish, or were you just going to keep going? Well, it was, it was kind of taking the broad tack. Um, yes, it's almost So I think, like, there is validity to the argument that a lot of the hate that Phil Fish gets is because he's become an embodiment for a bunch of things that aren't necessarily him. But then he does engage it. Yeah, look, so he was made of Mussolini and Hitler heads. Okay. Yeah, you know what? That's like the least of it at this point. Yeah, the yeah, founder whatever. of Survival Arts is Dantel, whose real purpose is to eat the flesh of powerful human beings in order to gain their immortality. Well, why, did he, why was he eating Hitler then? Uh, snack? So yeah, that's, that's the end. The boss explodes in a shower of dictator faces. Someone made that creative choice. Yeah, I'm completely on board with that. Yeah, Viper, uh, look, now oh, I'm... So now we know who you were. Yeah, now I'm in real estate. For being successful, he has become rich. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want to maybe diagram that sentence? I know, it's so, so great. And then we get to see the wonderful cast of folks who helped bring this game to fruition. Well, that's not cast, that's credits. I said we get to see the wonderful cast. Oh, I see. Yeah. I forgot, almost forgot for a second it was live action because they were such cartoonishly strange. <laughs> There's John Walter. Come on, Gunner, you can do it. Brian Creech. <laughs> These are made-up names. Well, no one he, wanted well, to be... Well, you knew he wasn't going to get a job with anyone else, didn't you? Except maybe a guy called Krong. Now uh, there's a man who's got his first name and his last name mixed up, hasn't he? <laughs> I do like that, and people who have two first names. <laughs> and well, there's another extreme example of someone with just the one name. Am I allowed to use my stripper name? Yeah, sure. At least someone Saskia. who very, very reasonably didn't want to have their real name on this. I don't know. Wouldn't you be proud? I wonder what... No, I should YouTube, or not YouTube, Wikipedia, and find out if these people made anything else. And here is a very boringly named person. Monica Brown. And then there's the big red knot machine. So yeah, yes. I think, like, I mean, the assertion that playing <laughs> a you Like, watching a YouTube video of a video game in any way... I don't think that's how you spell Jose. Sam Rudetsky. And now we're on to the next game. I like how I gave you carte blanche to do a fighting game, and so you immediately show up with three. Okay, would you want the video to be 20 minutes? No, no, fine, continue. So, guess what the next game is? It's Jackie Chan. Yeah. Of all people. Jackie Chan made a digitized fighting game, which is... Well, that took me by surprise. Yeah, by, 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 by Kinesco, which um, surprisingly is actually quite a well-made game. This is the is, first one, is Jackie all, Chan, the Kung Fu Master. Is he all the characters in the game, just wearing no. lots of different costumes? No, 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 no. Okay, but get this. The boss of this game is 
three Jackie Chans. Nice. Which is fucking unfair. So like, if the of boss the of your video game is three Jackie Chans, you've cheated. I'll be the dragon head, please. No, we get to... F I'm Kim Marie, an Australian oh. fighter who shouts I want you at inappropriate times. And, uh, and does running doesn't... bulldogs. And who doesn't have what I'd call a fighter's physique, frankly. Um, she actually is a martial artist. She was in Police Story 3. Really? A lot of these people are technically from Jackie Chan movies. Well, shame on me, then. Yeah. I thought she'd looked a bit doughy around the midriff. Um, uh, uh, look at some, like, strength doesn't always look how it looks in the movies. Like, you look at some MMA fighters well, and they're kind of pudgy. That. I mean, but look those at those motherfuckers the, can swing. I mean, look at the contestants of a world's strongest man competition. Those dudes are kegs, but that's yeah. supportive muscle. You need that shit. Uh. And then there's the mountain. It was just. Oh yeah, he's. I'm gonna get it wrong again. Was he Icelandic or Finnish? Because I said one last time and it was the other. I don't know. <laughs> well, he's something. He was one of them Scandinavian types. <laughs> that's good. I like that. Scandinavian. Yeah. So he's, he's Scandinavian. You're yes. all one big. Homogenous block now, so screw your independent and individual cultures. Well, who cares? Yeah, really. I mean, they're white, nobody cares. I mean, they brought it on themselves, calling themselves Scandinavian for just this exclusive group of three countries. <laughs> well, four countries. Everyone forgets Finland. Everyone forgets. Nobody suspects Finland. They're up to something. Um, so yeah, this is actually by fighting game player standards, not a bad fighting game. It's there's decent hit connection, very precise, which allows for like decent play. It has one of the worst jumping games in fighting games. Like the jumps are really retardedly slow. It's got a shitty ass character roster as well. Um, well, back when this game came out, you Mortal know, Kombat One had seven, and two of those were the same guy with a ding, palette ding, swap. Ding, ding, ding. What the fuck was that? Um, I bulldogged her so hard she bounced around and then bled. This game kind of has fatalities, but basically you just do your regular special moves. And what the fuck, additionally, was that? Happy! I was Happy referring dance. to the red womb that materialized behind her. Uh, that was a rose. I see. It not, looked, yeah, not a... Uh... It looked... I'm just gonna say <laughs> it. It looked like some, the inside of a spread-open vagina. <laughs> That's must be why they must be where that initial um, that was my euphemism own, came from. That was where my first thought went. <laughs> it's obviously a cervix. So Phil Fish was talking shit, and and you're you what the hell are you saying? I'm not sure. Um, well, okay, like I said, there, there, there's a good video that discusses the the, inter, the interplay of like how we as an audience have constructed like there's Phil Fish, there's the construct of Phil Fish as it relates to the audience, and then there's the audience. All the same is true of every public figure. I know, but then there's then we get to the internet and how you can be a public figure in the modern era in weird ways. Like, am I a public figure? Well, I had this discussion with the uh, Total Biscuit when we were at the Escapist Expo together. He's another LP superstar. And British, I say that like I'm an LP superstar. If you put the fusion earrings on Yahtzee and Total Biscuit, you get the perfect British critic. critic. Yeah, and then we have to fight Jim Sterling for the crown. <laughs> Jim Sterling is one of the wish dragons. But we were saying that um, the thing with the internet is that there tends to be a more sort of engagement between celebrities and the audience, and we were saying that's probably a bad idea. Yeah, I, I actually agree with that, because... I mean, I like to... See, 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 that does not look like a rose to me. It looks wet. <laughs> uh, it's a reminder for pap smears. Get your cervix checked. I mean, at best, maybe it's a sort of icing swirl made to look like a rosette. <laughs> Mysterious lion. Yes, yeah, so we were. So, what the fuck? So again, I, I mean, I think I'm a good case study for this. Do I yet count? Am I internet famous? Do do I have a thing? Do I have an audience? How Am many, I just a person who talks? How like, many Twitter followers you got? Uh, I don't know. Let me look. I'll find out. Yeah. Well, I won't embarrass you by saying how many I've got. Well, no. Tell me. I'm curious. I'm up to ninety thousand now. Oh wow. Yeah. Just, See, I mean, just this is this is the there. thing. Like, is there a line? Like, how do I know? Does, like, a, 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 like a bunch of balloons fall down from the roof? It's like, ah, you're internet famous! Like, well, what is that's, it? that's interesting, isn't it? I mean, uh... And again, like, I think I'm in a good position to be, like, an example of... Am I on the borderline of it? Could I be it? Do I want to be that? I, don't, I, I mean, I don't really I want to. I wouldn't say so. I mean, um... I wouldn't say so. I mean, I mean I there's know. a difference between... 2,647. I mean, fame, I would say, indicates a wider range of awareness. Whereas but see, what here's the thing. Like, what I've got you got Who outside say, of gaming knows who the fuck Phil Fish is? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, that's the thing. He's subculturally famous. I mean, He's that's, not famous. I mean, that's why we have the term internet famous, because we need to clarify these things. That... Let's not even try to make sense of what we just witnessed there. Everybody in... 
Everyone inside my gaping vagina, kids. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Happy! I got tiny mysterious lions inside me. Oh, they jiggle about. Within every woman is a mysterious lion. Is this Jackie Chan's, like, nephew? Or something? Um, that's, I think, Andy Lau. He's been in a bunch of movies as well. Well, hush my mouth. Yeah. No, was, like I said, the game's, the game's fascinating, because it, with a tiny little bit of tweaking, it could be a, you know, it could have been a really solid game. They made a sequel to it, um, called Fists of Fire, which actually does improve a fair bit. The jumping game is still categorically ass, but there's super moves and a few extra, um, bits and pieces. I think when we say, you know, fame, it comes down to relative sizes of fish and relative sizes of pond. ponds. Yeah, and I mean that's fittingly enough. Phil Fish yeah. is a big fish in a small pond. Well, a medium-sized fish. Probably a medium. I mean, I mean, he's if, not if, the kind of fish that fills a pond. So many ponds! It's a gift. I'm telling you this. Yeah, name. It, it, it is. He looks like Graham Garden. Have you noticed? Yeah. Like, every I, time I see I, I think of him, it's like, oh, Graham Garden's in the news. Wait, like, he's thirty years younger somehow. There's a mutton chopsy man. Yeah. You don't see many people rock on the chops these days. So I'd say, yeah, he's got, like, renown. He's got a certain amount of notoriety. Because, I mean, in... As a general game, game player person, I hadn't really heard of him because I'm not that big into the indie game scene. Whereas people who are really big into the indie game scene, he's he was already quite big before he sort of, you know, reached mm. out into the wider gaming world with sort of fez mm. and then like kind of dicky comments on Twitter and shit. He's like a Jonathan Blow. Because, I mean, that's the thing. Like, he was, he was who he was on... The, the little indie game website, TIG something, and I'm forgetting, you know, I'm sorry, don't fucking hate me for forgetting this, and then, basically, he just continued doing that, you know, he didn't really change exactly, but it just, at some point, it crossed over into, he was famous enough for him, for what he was doing to be being a dick to the audience. You know what I mean? Like, there's a difference between just telling someone yeah. to shut the fuck up, and then there's being perceived as being a dick to the audience. Yeah, I have a certain amount of reputation in that area. But, You're not uh, good in person. Well, no, but I try to keep out of, you know, one-to-one -one communication. Yeah, see, I, you know, I just... Just make sort I, of I general care. statements, you're all twats, that <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. well, okay, I, I mean, mean as, and long then, as, as long as you say Do you you're... feel you have an obligation to your audience? Because, um, you know? I mean, they do, you know, if it wasn't for them clicking, you'd be... Well, I have an be... obligation to put videos out. I have an obligation to entertain, so that they keep watching the videos and making me a living. Mm -hmm. So how much do you think that, you know... If you're asking, do I feel I have an obligation to actually engage with my audience on a personal level, then no. I don't think, no. I, I don't think you have an obligation to that. But, I mean, what if they started... What if, you know, as a collective, they started screaming about one specific thing or a change they wanted made? Like, how much Then I would, you, I would you... not engage with them whatsoever. What if it started to... I would wait for them to move on to the next controversy. I'd wait for it to blow over. Oh, well, no, I, you know, I'm not talking about controversy. I just mean, what if they were just getting bored and wanted you to do different shit? Well, What if they, what well, if they didn't like what you're putting out? Like, it's important that you have the audience because the audience pays your way, but how much do you want to modify yourself to cater well, the, to them? Well, the beauty of the audience is they will very rarely tell you to do different shit. I mean, that's the thing with fans, isn't it? They're all like... Just keep doing more of what we like. No, fans, we, uh, we want you to do something completely new that's exactly the, the same. Yes, we've made that point. And I mean, that's, you know... I think you can just get trapped. I mean, that's the but, problem you know, people with the will, horde. Pe I mean, people will get bored of my stuff. That could very easily happen. But there will always be more people discovering it. I suppose. I mean, that's the good thing about the internet, is it's uh, an enormous audience. It's a... It's, yes, it's a very... Vast. It's a... It's a wide platform for content with mm. very little restriction. It's... It's... It's Which a fucking is, miracle that I don't think enough people take advantage of, like... Well, it's... It's a... Quite a cutthroat environment because the only real uh, decider of success is quality. <sighs> Well, quality and, you know, mass market appeal. I mean, dude, who makes the most money doing YouTube videos? Funny shit. Would you describe that as funny? What? Would you describe the most popular, you know, Let's Player as funny? Well, people seem to find him funny. I don't think mass appeal a... is an inherent... Well, he's, well... I mean, while... I mean, we're talking about... Let's face it, we're talking about PewDiePie here, aren't yeah. we? Because I didn't know who that a... was, because I don't really spend a lot of time on YouTube, and then... He speaks got... to a very, 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 very broad school of humour. It's like Mr. Bean. It translates well. It's just screaming and, and slapstick nonsense. I slapped the blood out of her. I mean, yeah, it's not sophisticated. In the, no, in the well, slightest. see, again, like, I don't mind, and, uh, but see, the thing but to me is there's sophisticated lowbrow and there's shitty lowbrow. It's universal as you can get, is the thing. 
I don't know. I mean, there's, there's people are sniffy very about lowbrow, but I've never. I love lowbrow. Well, I've never had the kind of belly laugh I would get from like a piece of slapstick from, say, bottom. Mm. Than I that I I wouldn't laugh in the same way to like an incredibly clever Swifty and Ripost. Yeah, it's a different joke. I mean, structure. Just, like I mean, either. humor in something like bottom is just incredibly visceral. Pure, yeah, and viscera hits like straight to the physical reaction of <laughs> <laughs> bombs. That's how slapstick. Works and people are sniffy about it, but you know, you get bigger laughs with a knob joke. I still think, and but, but to me, there's still an art to it. Like there's good well, yes, lowbrow humor. I mean, humor it's all about it's all about timing. Yeah, basically. the structure. Like there's still I comedic can... skill that goes into a good lowbrow joke. I mean, the, the the obvious test of that is the Seltzer and Freiburg epic movies and shit. Those I, are awful. I've got to, I've, I have a theory in this regard. Excellent. My th my theory of comedy is that shit in motion is funny. Shit sitting there and on the floor is just crass. Uh, it depends on how you cut to it, but yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. Like, it has to be a surprise. I mean, I mean you know, it's, it's not just referring to shit. Yeah, it's the a physical, yeah. Thing. Shit in motion. No, throw a shit at a man's face. That's funny. There's a bit in Airplane funny. that's in my head now where it's just like, looks like the shit's really hit the fan. And, and it then, just cuts to a picture of a fan and then just a big pile of excrement hitting it. That's and an it's so fucking stupid, but it yeah, kills me every time. It's an time. example of uh, a well-timed yeah. dumb just joke. Just the fan's there and you're like, there's a fan. Where's the... Ah, there it is. Because it's in motion. I think another good one, like, I, I do like that kind of humor. Like, you know how the essence of humor is surprise. But I think... You... Actually, actually, Gabriel, um... You tell me. No, yeah, actually. Ask me the question, what's the essence of humor? What's the essence Timing. of... Timing. <laughs> I see what you did there. That's, that's good. A, that's a Mark Kermode joke. That's good. I like that. I like those... See, and then there's anti-jokes. And I mean, that, that's what I mean. Like, where you put the surprise can change a lot. Like, uh, well, one example that I... I don't think the movie's that great, but I think it has one example that I like to use as sort of a, a symbol of this, is in Austin Powers 3, where... You watched Austin Powers 3? Yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't very good, but there's one joke in it that Gold I think... Gold member? Yeah. There's one joke in it that I think exemplifies this, where you can... if Just because you see a joke coming, I don't think ruins the joke if you make the surprise how predictable the joke can make itself before it finally executes. Like, when they release the moon and it hits him in the balls and he goes on about it for fucking ages, and it just... The surprise becomes the absurdity of the the lead-up to it and then the overdone reaction. I think there's a lot of stuff that's over-reliant on that. Oh, uh, it's... That's I know, why, like everything, it's, it's, it's... it. You know, That's why I hate Family Guy. Yeah. Oh, Family Guy is great to watch because I think it's a fantastic textbook on how not to do a lot of jokes. Have you won yet? Uh, no, I've only oh, beat no. one of the three Jackie Chan boss characters. The, it's the, it's the boss is three Jackie Chans, that's so unfair. Now I'm fighting drunk Jackie Chan. Well, did he at least let you have a drink of water in between? No, it's just straight to the next fight with wanker Jackie Chan. Well, speaking of bottom, actually, we've yeah. perhaps you should have chosen a game that Rick Mail is in since he died recently. And that Trying seems to think, to be did your he voice pattern. act any? Um, that's a possibility. I can't think of any. I think... I have a vague memory that there might have been a Young Ones game for Commodore 64, because there was for pretty much <laughs> there everything. Was, yeah. There wasn't anything game for Commodore 64, you could just... But as we were discussing earlier, Rick Mail did do some adverts for Nintendo games in Back the UK, in the day, yeah. which were kind of very sort of idiosyncratic. They were very Rick mail -y. They were very silly. I mean, I just remember this one advert where he was advertising Nigel Mansell's uh, racing game. Nigel Mansell being you know, a famous race car driver in England. And um, he advertised it by dressing up as Nigel Mansell and like addressing the camera saying, Hi, I'm Nigel Mansell, and introducing his family, all of whom are also Nigel Mansell. <laughs> and, and, That's great. And, uh, and That's he, good. And he opens the door and introduces his dog, who is another Nigel Mansell, who just says, Woof. <laughs> that was back when Nintendo had a marketing department. Yes, rest in peace, Rick Mail. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, I grew up on watching stuff like Bottom, which is... So, so, have you ever watched those Simpsons episode where they took the piss out of British comedy? Mm. And I think specifically they were using like Bottom as the, uh, the example there. It's just two violent twats in a grim life. Oh yeah, being hideous to each other, but also sprinkled with actual moments of care. Massive amounts of innuendo. <laughs> I was going for something nice there. Yeah, yeah, but it's very think, innuendo you know. laden. Very innuendo laden. I like, think you're the Eddie of this relationship. Do you think? Yeah, because you look like him and you still drink. So uh, you're saying you sympathise more with uh, Rick Mayo's character then, the incredibly small penis virgin. Is he a virgin? Well, yeah, that's part of the joke. You know, he's a he's a wittering twat who 
who just has well, I'm no... a withering twat. Withering twat who has no friends and nobody likes and can't get laid. Oh, well, see, I've, I've had sex, so... <laughs> Take that, Earth. Yes, that's exactly the sort of thing he would say as yeah, well. Yeah, uh, <laughs> brag about it. I've had the sex. I've seen the vagina. But, yeah, I mean, most of the jokes in an average episode would be someone saying, uh, Oh, you're very innuendo-laden today. And, uh, Am I? And uh, they would reply, Yes, I couldn't get to the toilet in time. <laughs> I mean, half the time it doesn't even make that much sense. <laughs> I think that's when the structure of the joke creates the joke, and the internal aspect of it doesn't really matter. Yes, and if that didn't work, they just hit each other with frying pans for a while, or chainsawed each other's legs off. Mm. It was like Tom and Jerry, but live action and grim. The grimness of it is what I enjoyed. Like it's just it, like because that's what I mean. Outside of the absurdity of the jokes and the silliness, like the, the comic, the really sort of yeah, that's Tom and Jerry silliness, yeah. it's very depressing. That's what I like about British comedy. Yeah. I mean, all American television seems to have this aspirational element <laughs> to it. Well, I mean, even the American like, Dream. Even the sitcoms. Rest in peace. I, even the good sitcoms, like say Arrested Development, are about rich families, and they got like the one lone hero you like you can relate to. Michael wasn't really a hero though. Like he was just a. Well, bigger, still and now it's to be continued. The game doesn't even end, and there's no second game. So go fuck yourself. What bollocks! Yeah, and it's not like they could get Jackie Chan to do this again. I mean, I imagine he's stiffened up a bit these days. No, no, still, still alive. I don't think he's doing the suicidal stunts anymore, which, to be fair, is probably a good idea, because he managed to dodge an awful lot. Now, I heard a story once that uh, the, the Young Ones was uh, being considered for, Ameri for by an American network. Have you ever the seen devices. the um, American Red Dwarf pilot? Well, we'll move on to... The, well, well, let me get my point out <laughs> first. Uh, like, they, were, they were shown the British, like the Young Ones, and the American producers asked which character was supposed to be, you know... The, the, good the hero they're yeah. supposed to identify with and the answer being that none of them none of them and that's kind of the point although you will see bits of yourself in them I see we're playing Street Fighter the game the movie the game yeah Street Fighter and there's poor Ming-Na Wen having a slummet when she was young as Chun-Li who mean, you can now see in uh, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. oh Kylie Minogue whatever yeah. happened to her well see this is what I love about this game you can play a video game where Jean-Claude Van Damme beats up Kylie Minogue Nice. Yeah, that's funny to me. And only because, you know, striking unarmed women is hilarious. And short haired Ken. Yeah, short haired Ken. And, yeah, and then, you know, Belgian Guile. <laughs> and Bison. So this game is a fucking peculiarity for a lot of reasons. It's made by intelligence. Wait, wouldn't Raul Julia have been dead by this point? Um, he was dying on the set. When he showed up, his, uh, I think it was stomach cancer. Maybe, I'm, I'm, I might be wrong, but Wait, he, he had something. He was really thin. The whole movie actually kind of got wrecked up because they were waiting for him to get back to fit. Well, I knew that to... about the film, but does the same apply to the game? Oh no, the game's mocap character is... The game's digitized character is not Raul Julia. Okay. So I've decided to be Guile because, surprise, surprise, they made Van Damme's character retardedly OP. Well, he is the protagonist. Yeah, but okay, this game is just... A bad fighting game for so many reasons. I think, a we, bad we, collision. I think we start where we say this is the epitome of pointlessness in a game. <laughs> Just baffling. Like We've made a game version of a film that's based on an infinitely superior game. Yeah. So the game has... Uh, like... Novelty value only. Well, that doesn't carry a whole... Uh, carry the production through to the end, novelty value, does oh, it? Oh, lordy, no. I mean, this was a mistake from the start. The it's funny like, thing is, there are like actually... You, it's like when you were talking about making a game based on the development of uh, whatever it was. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, well, that shows how... Uh, oh, oh uh, Shaq Fu. Oh, that's right, yeah. yeah. And what I, kind and of I game said, was that going to be? And that? I said, that is a game that does not really get past the idea stage. Oh, hell no. no I, I think the whole... Developing it, you realize what the f stupid you ask fucking yourself, idea it is. What the fuck are we doing? But that was the thing. That was why I brought that up. Is because that game could happen these days. Possibly. There is no grade of irony that cannot just become reality now. Well, which more is... likely, it'll get kickstarted, and then whoever kickstarted it will run off with the money, and we never <laughs> yeah. heard from again. I should do that. I gotta help. Gabe's Kickstarter of a game that he'll totally, totally make. Well, you've sort of given away the game at this point, haven't I'm you? curious to see if that would even hurt my Kickstarter chances. Is that one of Chun-Li's moves in the original game? <laughs> no. Like the, the game is full of moves that don't happen, juggles that shouldn't be in any fighting game, like just infinite juggles. The game's got loads of infinites, shitty hit detection, shitty collision. Well, they remembered the saucy outfits, at least. Yeah, a bad super meter system, um, just generally... 
You could, if you slowed it, it's for, uh, like, if you slowed it down and simplified it a little bit, you may actually get a decent game. The odd thing is, there are actually two digitized Street Fighter games. This one, and the one made, um, for the PS1, which is actually a completely different engine, and is basically a reskin of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo with the digitized actors used from this. I see. Except it looks like cheese, it is fucking terrible. I, I think cheese is quite appealing looking, actually. Yeah, but you don't want it making up the pixels of your video game. Well, no, it would start to smell. Mm. Um, so yeah, that exists. It's a it, it, it's a more playable game because the engine is just literally the functional Street Fighter engine from Super Turbo. This is its own engine made by Incredible Technologies and is not a good engine. Is Incredible Technologies an ironic name? <laughs> See, calling a company that's just tempting fate, isn't it? <laughs> Super awesome, fantastic technologies, game makers extraordinaire. Or like, you know, game company that will exist for eternity, where... <laughs> Isn't it a shame that Rick Mail died? Yeah, that sucked, but, you know, it's was, coming for all of us, it's gonna happen. I was watching Bottom... John Cleese is gonna be dead soon. I was watching Bottom Live this morning. Yeah, I walked in and there was oh, Bottom on TV. If we want to take it to uh, yeah, Culture Corner. No, I heard they originally wanted to call it Your Bottom. So that, that, <laughs> so that it would be automatically funny when you talk about it. Did you see your bottom on the television last night? No, I remember the the, the 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 VCR case for one of their first live shows when it was put on tape and sold was Rick Mail with a mop pushing. No, it was the other way around. It was Aid Edmondson with a mop pushing Rick Mail into a big drawn bum. <laughs> and I just remember looking at that and thinking, and it just said bottom live, and I'm like. Well, their sense of humor is evolving, you know, finally. So you can talk shit about, uh, you know, it being very puerile, but Rick and I... Aid were on the uh, the cutting edge of alternative comedy. When yeah. It was when it first came about in the comedy store in well, the uh, I, I honestly don't think Bottom's probably their best work. I don't think it's bad, but at the same time, I think unless like you, I think you're... there's a gleeful abandon to it that I like. Yeah, like I think f you you have a specific taste for that kind of milieu, which I think. Is Ooh, why you milieu, like it. Eh? You Pardon me that... while we enjoy our milieu on our on the city with our filet sandwiches. Uh, you're just jealous. I'm going to have an actual English degree. You Fuck. went to the English school of life. Fuck you, man. I've got the <laughs> accent. <laughs> um, so yeah, I yes. I can take or leave bottom as the uh, as the exemplar of their work. I still think what do young you like ones. best? The young ones. Yeah, young yeah. ones. I think because young ones. Well, there's, more, I, I just, uh, there's more episodes of Bottom than the Young Ones. Yeah, I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. I think Young Ones is great because it had some really brilliant absurdism. That was a stupid um, little dance you were doing there. Yeah. Oh yeah, and the super moves auto-track even mid-move, so you can't make them whiff, which whiff punishing is a big part of any fighting game. That is, if you miss an attack, you should be able to hit them afterward. I love the term whiff punishing. <laughs> Oh, I think someone's on on course for a bit of whiff punishing. <laughs> whiff punish! It's a thing in the fighting game community. Um, it's a thing in fighting games. It's an important part of the structure. But it's, anyway. Um, yeah, I, I think Young Ones is fucking fantastic and odd and a good... I, I love how they had to get, um, what was it, they got, they got a tax break by making themselves a variety show by having a music video bit in the middle. Yes, I'm pretty sure I told you that. Yeah, and it was great, because then you'd have, like, just Motorhead and yeah, Madness. Yeah, nowhere. Yeah, just, like, the Motorhead's in the land room doing a song. And I think that's a really cool sort of element of the show and well, of it was, the style. It was a very, uh, you know, youth, yeah, anarchic youth yeah. thing. Because you know, they, they were trying to uh, use alternative comedy to appeal to people who were sick of the sort of toothless middle class comedy that. that what was? You mean, you mean you'd be able to give me a better idea? What was the old, you know, the other, their competition uh, in terms of comedy and that? Well, they even England? like uh, the Good Life. There's even an episode of The Young Ones where they call the Good Life out, huh. where they show the title screen, the title sequence of The Good Life, and then like Vivian like bursts through it and goes, "No, I hate the fucking Good Life." Because everyone's so bloody nice! Which one was The Good Life? That was like the retirees good and the life cottage is an Good Life is an incredibly bland, middle class, as I say, toothless, jolly comedy <laughs> about, a, about a wholesome young couple who decide to live self-sufficiently in, self yeah, so, in suburbia. Yeah, there's one I'm thinking of that had a lot of gardening in it, so I'm, that must be yes. it. Yes, it's, it's quite excruciating from a modern perspective. <laughs> yeah, that's just what, painful. That's what you just had to put up with before alternative comedy. Was Young Ones like the vanguard of that? I mean, um, well, I, might, 
I'd say, my, my, um, my, my historical understanding of the positioning of it. I'd good. say alternative comedy started in the comedy clubs of London. Oh yeah, I, I mean understand. there was the stand up and the. I mean before then, uh, before a certain wave of comedians, including Ben Elton and Rick Mail and Aid Edmondson, and stand up comedy was just you know. Uh, Bernard Manning making mother-in-law jokes, that sort of thing. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, oh, I had Les Dawson and, um, what's his name? In Australia, it was like Rick Rude saying stuff about Asians. Yeah, well, that sort of thing. Alternative comedy was just when people just realised we could just say poo and wee all the time. <laughs> oh, well, you know. I'm simplifying, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Best foot forward, yeah, it's got to put on a good show. Yes, but, you know, I think Rick Mail, you know... At least he didn't die before he made the impact on culture that that, he, that culture was crying out for. I think my favorite thing was um, Aid, Aid just um, talking about uh, you know when they were sitting around writing and they used to just like kill each other laughing. Yeah. And um, now he's actually gone and died without me, the selfish bastard. <laughs> and uh, so that's I, I I like that. Like I like that approach to death. Like I was always love them. Um, Graham Chapman's, Graham Chapman's funeral, funeral is yeah. a great, is, is a, a bizarrely hilarious thing to watch. And I think that generally, when a comedian dies, it should be a roast. Yeah. I think that's a good, a good, you know, thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think all funerals should be a celebration of a person's life. Yeah. And not just whining about it. What do you want done to you after you're dead? Do you just not give a shit? Do you want I to like, donate yourself to science? I think I'd like to take the Hunter S. Thompson route. So, a cannon? Yeah. I cremated and then shot out of a cannon. <laughs> See, I want to be cremated and then put into the food at my funeral. And then there'll be Presumably a pre-recorded... Presumably you don't tell them. Oh, no, no, there'll be a pre-recorded video that comes on at the end of um, the yes. thing after the food's all done. And it's just me going, I'm inside you now. <laughs> well, you and know, that way everyone's just angry at me as opposed to sad, which is a state I'm more comfortable with. You know, there's a lot of... Like, uh, primitive cultures that had a cannibalizing it, yeah. the dead ritual. And you know what? In terms of funerary rituals, that makes a lot of sense to me. You're with me forever. Who the fuck is Blade? Right, well, this game didn't do a few characters. So there's no T-Hawk, no Dalsam, no Blanka. So they had to replace those. So Blade, I think, kind of replaces Blanka. Sawada replaces T-Hawk. It doesn't look um, anything like... And Akuma like replaces... It doesn't look anything like Wesley Snipes. <laughs> He has a rocket launcher, so there's that. Is, I don't think you're allowed to bring a rocket launcher to a fight. Is Blade a character in the larger Street Fighter canon? Oh, shit buggery, no. None of Street Fighter the movie is in any way, shape, or form except a canon. I see. Um, the animated film actually uses canon. Uh, the really, really quite excellent um, Street Fighter Assassin's Fist YouTube series yes, is uh, very much canon. You've waxed lyrical on that subject before. Um, if you're a Street Fighter fan, you'll, you should enjoy it. Um, if you're not a Street Fighter fan, I don't know how much you'll get out of it, but it's, if, if you are, it's, it's, it's a bit of fun. Um, yeah, Blade is just, it's not a thing. None of this that you're looking at is a thing. Oh yeah, well, this is right. this is Guile's insanely unfair super move that takes away pretty much half of your health bar. Is fireball invincible? Tracks, uh, covers loads of distance. Like it's insane. It's... Oh no! Now who will win? Jean Claude Van Damme can o masturbate only to this. OP versus OP. Yeah, I mean the game is not balanced well. It's not organized well. The AI is abysmal. Mm, I'm seeing that. Yeah, I've literally, I literally got through most of this just doing flash kick. Yeah. Just flash kick up close, and it hits four times for some reason. If I hit someone in the air, I can hit them before they hit the ground, which is something you're not really meant to do in a lot of fighting games. Like how much you want to let your characters juggle can result in like long combos that can basically end an entire health bar. So it just basically becomes who fucks up first, which is kind of not a lot of fun to play. I zoned out like two paragraphs ago, man. <laughs> I'm not talking to you, I'm speaking about fighting games for an audience that maybe isn't aware of how they you know, how, how they work. Put a like on this video if you also sound zoned out while Gabriel was waffling on there. <laughs> Fuck you. You said, you, you said I was allowed to do a fighting game one. Well yes, because it's boring. And I was kind of hoping we could talk topics over it, rather well, we than you been. just... We spent literally... Like... Well, well, let's how we go to our other one then. Alright, what's the other one? My other one is that uh, it's come out that Splatoon the new IP on the Wii U will have local multiplayer, which was a concern of mine that I expressed, if you'll recall. Yeah, I recall. But, and this is a big but, a big stinky squidgy but. All right. It's the local multiplayer is one v one only. Will there be bots? Like, I, do you have a team? I don't know that much. The like uh, the the game's designed for four v four, but that's online only. See, I think. 
I can kind of understand that because four player split screen first person shooters is even with a big TV kind of not great. Well, GoldenEye seemed to get by all right. Everyone seems to remember liking that. Uh, have you gone back to that? Well, nostalgia has some kind of basis. I didn't play much of it oh, myself. Oh, for its time, honestly. it was, you know, revolutionary. It was great fun. I mean, because you could get four people together and play a first-person shooter, which really wasn't... I mean, I can see that it looks absolute bollocks now. Um, yeah. Well, it's like 11 meg. It's insane when you go to download these yeah. old games. It's just like, man, I remember this being a big deal. I paid like 90 bucks for this, and now it's just like, it'll download in less time than it takes for me to, like, reach up and get, like, my water. Uh, it's not what you got, it's what you do with it. Counts. Yeah. True for video games, penises, and life in general. But uh, we made the point that all the consoles are just leaving local multiplayer behind, and it's the only way they really, uh, excel. Well, I mean, I think 1v1 can work if there's bots. Because I think 1v1 in that kind of setting where, I mean, the, the trailer made it look a lot of quite dynamic and fun when there's a lot of people. I think 1v1 could make it boring, but if there's bots then at least you've got this, you know, you, you have a degree of agency in terms of your other human player, and then you've got a bunch of other jerks who are also in the way and kind of helping you out and stuff like that. I think the Wii U shot itself in the foot by only having one screen controller allowable per console. Yeah, I mean, there's output concerns, I mean, they're basically having to render and do the game twice. Hey, I mean, it's uh, the best character from the film. Fuck yeah. He besides, also played, um, Raul Julia. Yeah. Raul Julia's great. Apparently he had a lot of fun making the movie, his kids love sure the game. I'm sure he did, you can tell in a performance when the actor's having fun. Yeah. Raul Julia's hamming it right the fuck up. That's why I always think Harrison Ford must have really hated the last few films he's done. I think he's just getting tired. Well, wouldn't you? Yeah. Harrison Ford just wants a nap, he just wants to fly helicopters. Uh, Zangief's Lariat. What? proved ineffective. Um, yeah, the game is not, again, not well designed for grappling characters. And all of Zangief's throws just look demented because they're just sort of awkwardly swinging the fucking character models at each other. I think Splatoon should have allowed at least 2v2 multiplayer. It should have gone as far as they could have done. See, then you've got the four-player split-screen issue. Which... Well, some people are fine with it. I mean, again, yeah, having it as an option and just saying, look, because, I mean, when you play Mario Kart 4v4, I mean, 4 play Mario Kart, the frame rate drops to 30. I don't think that's an I, unacceptable thing. I don't really notice 30 FPS. In any case, 30 FPS tends to look slightly, uh, slightly smoother than 60 FPS in some contexts. Um, well, again, I think that, you know, the fan base should accept that there are certain circumstances where if you've got four things being rendered on screen at once, yeah, you're going to get a drop. I, mean, I think 4v4 would be good if it was just like, yeah, we just it turns down to 30. But it's like, what are you fucking complaining about? Don't I mean, be jerks, I mean, it's, it's like how I've never played a 1080p game that didn't also look perfectly fine in a 720p resolution. Uh, now you're gonna have the PC Master Race people explaining to you why your eyes are wrong? Well, I'm sorry, but I, it's, it's... <laughs> I don't know, I, I, mean, it's, I, I it's personally don't got, fucking care. Like, it's never gotten in the way of my enjoyment of the game. No. I've never, yeah, I mean... And 60 FPS to me reminds me of, you know, the interior shots in Faulty Towers, and 30 FPS reminds me of the exterior shots in Faulty Towers. Interesting. Because, you know, in like uh, classics, when they make in classic sitcom development, the uh, interiors were all shot on tape and the exteriors were all shot on film. Mm, yeah. You did get that weird variation. Yeah. If, if you get Versus Bison. If you think the two environments seem different for ways you can't quite put your finger on, that's the reason. <laughs> also, the film they used to use in old British, the 70s British programs was kind of weird. That's why you get that kind of flair in Doctor Who whenever something went off. So, I'm fine with 30 FPS. That's perfectly workable. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a hubbub I mean, about is, it now. The film like, is 27 frames per second. That doesn't seem to bother people who watch films. Again, I think, you know, it, it's one of those circumstances where I think there's a, a hullabaloo, if you will. About hullabaloo, 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 hullabaloo. A schmozzle about it, which I don't think is... A what? Schmozzle. Uh, that's more of a wrestling term. Let's go to Urban Dictionary and see if that's there. <laughs> it's a neologism. I'm a, I just made it up. Now it's a real word. Ta -da. A what? A what? Um, yeah, I, 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 I think, like, even if you really like it, I think there's certain circumstances where it's fair to drop the fucking frame rate to execute more shit. Like, having four players something, well, the frame rate works. drops to 30, don't bitch about that. I don't think that's a valid complaint. I mean, no one bitches about lowering the quality of far away things in games, mm. because that's a standard sort of practice. Because I would, I mean, I don't know. I have played a lot of four-player Mario Kart, and it is fun. 
Jesus. And it's 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 fun because you've got people in the room with you, and I you have... can call someone a dick bag when they do something dick baggy to you, and they're right there. I have no opinion. Well, I I know you have no opinion about Mario Kart specifically, but I mean, you know, multi local multiplayer is fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly, it seems to do well in the bar. And it's so much more fun when you do something to someone else, and you can look at them, and you can look them in the eye and smile. Well, that's always been my attitude. I don't like online multiplayer as much as local because you can't slap someone in online <laughs> multiplayer. You can't lean over and distract them by trying to kiss them on the cheek. Blow gently in their ear, I found, is a very good one because they can not notice you leaning over in their direction and you can actually be quite far away from them and get the effect. And there's something about having air just rustle gently across the back of your ear that just gives you the fucking shuddering willies. In, when I've had girlfriends, I've sometimes been in the habit of going right up close to their ear and then going... Because <laughs> it's a really disorienting experience, that. You uh, probably felt the same way if you're listening to this on headphones. <laughs> I just... I'm just... I'm, my brain is making the... When I've when I've had girlfriends and then the thing you followed that up with just it's come together. It's a fun together. game. It's a fun, flirty game. <laughs> Great. I mean, you, don't, you can't just like stare into each other's eyes all day, can you? Ladies. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a realist in these matters. <laughs> <laughs> what, it makes them laugh. Yeah, I know. Like, I've got million, you know, I've got dumb shit I do with girls. Like, it's, it's that thing. Once a girl's fucking you, or, you know, in general, once a person's yes. fucking you, they have that switch in their head that will make them put up with stupider shit yeah. than a stranger fucking would. And it, it becomes cute. It becomes the dumb thing that you do yeah. that's cute. It's like going om nom nom when you're going down on them. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, some people think it just kills the mood to just break first out laughing in the middle no, of sex. No, yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of... Um, Did you forget your last name or something? Uh, no, I just put the question mark there because it had question mark available to me, so I was like, huh? It's to be continued? It's uh, more cocks in my mouth. That's your last name. Yeah, more cocks in my mouth. That's... Uh, I think it's um, of Norman descent, uh, yes. originally. Um, it was uh, for someone who ate a lot of chicken. Yes, and yeah, I, think, uh, yeah, I think it's... It uh, uh, doesn't translate well to today. Distant cousins to the pound me in the butt now, please. Yeah, I think one of my ancestors is uh, Gaylord Moorcox in my mouth. And uh, my name's Gabriel and I'm a shithead. <laughs> That's my middle name. Gabriel and I'm a shithead Moorcox in my mouth. That's my full, uh, my, my full title. Well, we seem to have run out of footage. Yeah, I'm more interested in talking about the weird things you do during intercourse. Well, I'm it's done always with that. fantastic. No, it's it's wonderful. I'm just grateful we got through this video without you tacitly threatening me with death again. <laughs> you, I didn't tacitly threaten you with death to you, threaten you with death. I was doing point, that to prove that you, you defend yourself, that you, you want to live. Out, you pointed out that you could kill me at any time. Well, no, that that's shit. Caligula used to pull. No, 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 no. Because you were acting like you wouldn't. That like death. You know, that life meant so little to you that you wouldn't defend yourself in face of mortal danger, which well, I, I don't believe. I didn't, I didn't believe that. that. I just that said was I'm what, though, no, there was a, there was a hi definite hint of that in your morose little My oh, point I don't care was, about death business. The point I made is that I'm not afraid of death. I, I don't. You were, no, you, you were coupling that with a general attitude that you. I mean, you it would know, be. Wouldn't fight it. You, I yeah, would you fight would. it because it would be inconvenient at this point, but I'm not afraid <laughs> of death. No, but again, you, you know, you, you were acting as though. You know, where, where that was why I came up with my, you know, Gabe's camp and then the Rape Marauders camp. Because that was a better analogy. Like, because right. you, you'd resist that. You'd resist. That, that, that was my point. Is, you know, if you'd, you'd fight back because you want to live. Well, I'm not sure I'd want to live in a post-apocalyptic society because there would be no internet. Yahtzee yeah, Crowshaw in a sentence, ladies and gentlemen. Well, look. <laughs> I'm I'm sort of conditioned for modern society as it is. I live Look, in the so inner I'm city teasing, for fuck's sake. Yeah, I'm teasing, so am I. I don't think there's any real chance. If there was an apocalypse, go I just wouldn't want to be in the way. I right? see. I think I think you've got a natural survival instinct, which I don't think you are taking into account. Like you will, you'll just find a way. I mean, you'd make a great. Um, you know, maybe you could be the uh, lead marauders entertainer. I've been tossing around that idea as a book, actually. Being the lead of Marauders Entertainment. I've just got this idea for this one guy in the uh, in the post-apocalyptic wilderness who's trying to uh, restart the concept of stand-up comedy. <laughs> so he goes around on a tandem with his mum. <laughs> his mum? Why yeah. his mum? I just think it'd be Oh, that's funnier. right. We were discussing this. Originally, it was going to be me. Yeah, we were discussing like we'd ride around on a tandem. So now I'm back. like a you know 54-year-old frump, frumpy I think the lady. Con I was thought about the concept, and I thought it's funnier if it's his mum. 
who's just incredibly physically strong and defends him from the marauders. <laughs> and he stands on a soap- mother blaster. He stands on a soapbox and makes jokes about all the fried newt everyone's eating. <laughs> this has a potential to be like the last clown. Well, it's a character, but it's not a plot. I need to work on it. Um. Okay, maybe like the lead marauder hasn't laughed in his entire life and someone thinks you could bring peace to the warring clans with your humour. Well, it's not sure it's a novel yet. More like an Aesop's fable at present. <laughs> a good laugh. A good laugh helps. I think, you know, you need it. Yeah, there was a, there was a story that got told about Caligula where uh, apparently when he was having banquets he used to say shit like it's just occurred to me that I only have to say the word and all your throats will get cut. <laughs> See, I think that is a more legitimate threat than me saying I'm going to jump on you and strangle you. Well, you didn't say that. You just said you could. Well, you just yeah. said I would be helpless to resist if you yeah, decided if, to kill me one day. If I was in the middle of peeing and you snuck up behind me with a knife, there's not an awful lot I could do either. Like that's you know that's that's one of those bizarre reality things. It's you like could, standing and you know waiting for a train. Someone could just push you. You could piss on my shoes. <laughs> I could pee on your shoes. Ow! There's a knife in my kidney. Hey. Pee's on shoes. Hey, got we on your shoes. Take piss that com- piss coming out of your stab wound. Why yeah, did I stab you in the kidney? That was stupid of me. In the kidney, yeah. Now I'm peeing out two holes. Should have gone for the throat. Yeah, but no. I mean, it, it's it, it wasn't that. It was to, 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 to imply that I know you'd you'd fight back. It's a natural human thing. It's like that All great right. bit in um, Sopranos where he's depressed and suicidal for the whole first season, and then two guys try to kill him, and he fights, and he fights like tooth and nail to fucking live, and then that actually sort of brings him out of his depression. Uh. Well, we've run out of video and topic, and we're a bit under the usual amount we do. Was there anything else you wanted to say to the internet? Um, someone tell me when I become internet famous. When enough of these happens, someone mail me like a little form going, congratulations, you're oh. now internet famous. Uh, people will just say you are, because they know you. I don't think that I ever will be. I don't think that I'm think enough of a thing. fame might be something more, be. more profitably... Oh, well, you're in luck there. Yeah, I don't seek it. I think fame it. is something more profitably decided on a case-by-case basis. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, I mean that's what I find it interesting. Because at some point, there'll have to be a line. Like, there has to be a, you've, ding, you've crossed over. Congratulations, I mean, you've leveled up. As generally famous. I mean, I get recognized <laughs> in the street. I got recognized in a bar last night. Was it, like, what bar? Uh, Fourth Wall. Oh, okay. That's a good bar if you're in Brisbane, you should check it out. Yeah, it's, it's the other one I go to besides the one I co-founded. <laughs> so what yeah, was know, it like? like yeah, who, you know who, what? Fuck it. Let's just advertise bars in Brisbane. Go to Fourth Wall. It's run by some mates of mine. It's a little casual, co- quiet, cocktail place. Kind of place where you can just sit at the bar and have a conversation with a stranger. And... Learn about drinks. Exactly. They, they, they tend to tailor drinks really well to your uh, preferences. Don Anne Street's one of my favorite places. Yeah, it's near Curbside, which is also all right. You'll run into Yahtzee Croshaw. Possibly. And possibly recognize him. Yes. What were they like? like? The person who recognized you. Were they what you'd call um, observably part of what you'd expect your audience to be? It was an arty fellow. Art ah, student. okay. Well, so, when I say recognize me, we were chatting and <clears throat> he was saying, my name's <clears throat> by the way, and I said, I'm Yahtzee, and then he recognized me. <laughs> so you introduced yourself as you, and then, then he recognized Well, he, w- he, was, he knew my work. In fact, he sort of... Sort of froze in the middle of the handshake and held it for like a minute. And I had to tell him, we can stop the handshake now. And he just whispered, I don't want to. <laughs> I want to be here forever. Touch me. Do you ever get, Have you ever had like a real creepy, like a full tilt creepy fucking fan yeah, experience? I, think, I don't yeah, mean I've like had, someone trying to make you laugh. I yeah, mean I've like a creepy. genuine fucking... I've had my fair share. I think I told you already. Like one time someone shook my hand and said they just wanted to touch me. See, I think that's trying to make you laugh. Well, it was a Nick Beardy fellow. Who yeah, I, I mean, that's I, 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 I do believe a lot of these circumstances are people trying to go for the kind of, you know, funny, awkward sort of giggle thing. And I think it's usually best to take it as that. Because well, then even if they're being creepy, you give them an out. You give them an ability to sort of not be creepy. I don't respond well to people trying to be funny and falling flat. <laughs> you don't respond well to people. Well, no. <laughs> I respond better to sexy ladies. Yahtzee Croshaw. Only talk to him if you're fuckable. Gabriel Morton says a lot of things with Yahtzee Crozier at the start. Don't hey, Gabriel Morton, just don't talk to me in general. No, I'm, I'm actually probably the more personable of the two that you can talk to in real life. Ha! Oh, fucking please. Don't even start. I will get other people into vouch for this about how fuck awful you are with humans in real life versus me. Well, you I'm like, hi, thanks for listening. Well, let's see I enjoy what, this. Well, let's see how you do with being approached by strangers when you just want to have a quiet rum. When I finally become internet famous. Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah, you know what? Let's Wish make, me a dream. Let's make this a campaign. Let's start a hashtag. <laughs> make Gabe famous. Fuck off. No, I don't want that. Let's see if we can get um, Graham Linehan to retweet you. Please don't do that. He favorited one of mine once. Oh, really? What yeah. was it? Actually, it was the one you accused me of ripping off from you, which I Oh, didn't. yeah, you did. No, I did not. Yes, you did, because I, I did remember not. the exact situation. We were sitting outside <sighs> talking about how you ask Twitter for shit because you asked me about something. And I said, why don't you just ask Twitter? And you go, because you get loads of tweets back from people saying they don't know what it is. And I said, that's like raising your hand in class and going, ooh, ooh, I don't know. That was the reason you ripping that off was the reason I got a Twitter. Because I'm like, you're getting, because I didn't even know that you did that. You put that on Twitter. I'm like, you're getting mileage out of my bits. I don't remember using your idea. It was my idea. <laughs> Maybe I just thought of it myself because it's such a easy to idea. Be, yeah, to, to be fair, to. there is a lot of that. Like people always accuse like theft when it's like it's really easy to have the same idea. And we are bizarrely similar in our Yeah, maybe we just thought of it both, we probably both had thought it of the it same separately time. because you know, you know we, That happens when we touch. We, we go, have the same joke. sort of lines of thought with yeah. pretty much everything we do. That's 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 why we get on so well. <coughs> oh, thief. Bring <coughs> tosser. Fuck nugget. Hmm. Seems to be something going around. Yeah. Caught a real bad case of go fuck yourself. Fuck with. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> See ya.